Hi everyone, this is Debbie with Common Sense Landlording. In this video, I'm going to take a little bit of time and break out the income. I've talked about my credit criteria in many different videos and how important I think it is to have standard rental criteria that you apply across the board. And I talk about knowing what is most important to you as a landlord. Mine is income, and that may not be the case for you. So decide what is the most important for you. But income is my top criteria. If someone does not have enough money, they are not going to be able to afford the property. And many people, many tenants, applicants, prospects have no idea how much it costs them to live every month. And that's going to fall onto you in many cases to tell them they don't have the money. But responsible people know how much money they bring in and how much money they spend every month just to live. And I'm not talking just rent and food. I'm talking fun, buying clothes, having their nails done, whatever is important to them. So it is important that every prospect applicant or tenant knows how to take their income from their job and appropriately budget it. And great tenants have learned how to do that bad tenants, that's a skill set they haven't learned. They tend to live beyond their means. And a lot of times they will spend all the money they have, and then they will run up credit cards and spend money that they don't have. So it's very important that you look at income. And I always get at least six pay stubs. If I don't get a complete picture, I will ask for more. <clears throat> and it's always the last six pay stubs, not just six random pay stubs. Somebody did that one time. So when I'm looking at income and proof of income, I'm looking, is it stable? Is it the same amount every time they get paid? Is it predictable? And is it consistent? I need to know that this person makes the same amount of money or roughly the same amount of money every time they get paid. Someone whose pay stubs very widely, they may get 300 this time. Let's say they're paid weekly. They get paid 300 this week, 800 next week, 600 the next week, 150 the next week. That's a true case. I've had that happen. This person worked hourly and sometimes this person worked a lot of hours and sometimes this person didn't. So watch that because that's not going to be stable and consistent income. I love people who have salaried nine to five jobs. They're going to bring home the same amount every time they get paid. So their paycheck will be $1,500 every two weeks, $1,800 every two weeks. Or in a case of someone who doesn't qualify, Maybe it's only $600 every two weeks. So look at the income very carefully. There are a lot of things that go into this. And I had someone ask me a really great question one time. They said, what do you do about people with non-traditional jobs? And these could be people that are servers. They could be hairdressers. They're people that, that get their money paid cash a lot of times. And a lot of this money is not going to be claimed self-employed people can often find, fall under that guideline. They, a lot of times the uh, self-employed people rather will operate at a loss. And I will be honest with my system and my criteria, it can be very difficult to qualify them because I don't accept cash under the table as income. I don't accept snapshots of bank accounts because those can be made up. Be very, very careful. And at the end of the day, I'm always looking for someone who can pay the rent. And if they cannot prove their income, that they can actually pay the rent every single month because of how much money they have coming in, then they're going to be disqualified. And someone who's self-employed, who's running their business at a loss may actually have enough money, but they can't prove it. So that's a problem for me. Sometimes you can use a tax return. And a good example of this is maybe someone who is, again, self-employed or a commissioned person. I once years ago had someone who was a commission-based employee. So her base salary was very low. Now, she'd been in this position two years. And that made the difference because she was able to show, it's a little bit over two years, actually, because she was able to show me two years of tax returns. And I could see that she consistently made, she actually made more money the second year than she made the first, but the first year she made quite a lot of money and she was able to show me how she was paid and it didn't fluctuate wildly, but that is not always the case. So income 
is is top for me. It is the one thing that is not bendable. It has to be at least three times the rent. And I don't have wiggle room on that. Someone says, well, what if it's $25 short or 35 or 50 or 75 or 100 or 150? Notice that slide there. At what point do you stop? And you can get yourself into trouble with fair housing if you make an exception for 25. Why not 50? You make it for 75, why not 100? So for me, the income of three times the rent is the line in the sand. That is the line. And I have had tenants call me. Let's say it's Tuesday and it's the fifth of the month and rent is due before late fees kick in. They'll say, Debbie, I can't come until Friday because I have the rent but I don't have enough money to drive out there. Some of them insist on bringing it to the office instead of paying online. And we don't use pay apps. That's another, that's something I'll talk about in another video. But these people don't assume that they live like you and me and that $25 to them isn't a lot of money. $25 may be the difference in them being able to put gas in their car and drive to work. It may be the difference in them eating or not. So don't assume that it's just $25. It's just $50. I don't do that anymore. So three times the rent for me is the line in the sand. So that's it on this video. If you haven't joined my free Facebook group, Common Sense Landlording, please go out there and do so. I'm going to be having some paid workshops coming up. I have one on pre-screening and I'm putting together one on credit criteria guidelines. And it's, um, it's it's very valuable. Everyone is asking me about that. So I'm going to put that together. It'll be at about a 60 minute workshop and I will list that on my Facebook group. So be sure that you join that so that you know when those are going to be coming up. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next video. <clears throat>